the kangaroo. Animal Fight Club's very own mixed martial artists who go head to head for total ultimate fighting. 25 feet in a single leap. Breakneck speeds of over 35 miles per hour. As fast as a wolf. Solid muscle makes up 80% of its body mass, making the male kangaroo built for fighting. It's easy to see why a group of kangaroos is called a mob. And when they clash, they become nature's ultimate kickboxing champions. This mobster has been in charge for two years, twice as long as usual. He's still armed and dangerous. Within the mob, ranks are strict. The only way to the top is to fight your way up. Now, this deputy is tired of playing second fiddle, but he has to be sure he can win. The mobster has exclusive rights to the females. With those kinds of privileges at stake, fights often get ugly and deadly. The mobster must crush this rebellion. The deputy takes some shots. But comes back. They interlock claws to hold each other off. That was just the start. It's time to pull out the big guns. A kangaroo's spine runs all the way to the end of its tail. Over three feet long, it has up to 25 vertebra, supported by ligaments. Their tails can support their entire body weight. Balancing on their tails, their legs go into trigger mode. Their large muscles contract and release a massive burst of energy, delivering a mega kick. Their kicks are so loud, they can be heard nearly 500 feet away. The force pushed through double claws on their fused second and third toes could disembowel, so kangaroos have evolved extra thick skin on their stomachs. The kicking's not cutting it. The mobster tries something new, the neck grab. Claws nearly two inches long are sharp enough to puncture eyes. So they throw their heads back for protection, exposing their necks to being ripped open. A powerful floor slam. And the deputy knows he's fighting a losing battle. He waves the white flag with a grunt. Satisfied, the mobster leaves him to wallow in his defeat and returns to his mob to remind them who's boss. As 25 grown men, the rhino is the second largest land-dwelling mammal on Earth. And it has a secret weapon. Its sense of smell. Its odor detection system is bigger than the rest of its brain put together. A rhino can detect the age and sex of another rhino from up to a mile away. And they don't like what they smell. It's fight time. The old bull is picking up the scent of a young male. This 
challenger wants to boot him out and take over his turf. The old bull weighs up the risks. The young challenger is smaller than him, but makes up for it with youthful agility. Without territory, the old bull may never mate again. He hurdles at 30 miles per hour toward his enemy. The same force as a pickup truck. The young challenger braces for impact, dropping his head to protect his neck from a skewering. The old bull's armed with a two-foot-long horn. Weighing six pounds, it's made of the protein keratin. And because it contains no nerves, it can't feel pain, only inflicted. Mounted on his 800-pound head, the force behind a single uppercut can be fatal. A crafty hook, and he has him where he wants him. One thrust could gore the young challenger's underbelly, where the skin is half as thick as on his armored back. Instead, he tosses him more than a foot off the ground. With neck muscles so strong, he can sling the weight of a family car into the air. A second leg lock drives the message home. Take on this old timer at your peril. But the old bull lets him off the hook, this time. He's taught the young challenger a golden rule of engagement. Pick on someone your own size. Next up, a surprising contender in Animal Fight Club. This penguin might look cute and cuddly, but when it comes to fighting over females, there's nothing cute about a bloody beat to the face. This neotropical South American peninsula is the go-to vacation destination for the Magellanic Penguin. This devoted husband has spent all day gathering food for his wife. Every September, 200,000 penguins flock here to fix up their nests and breed. Life here is good. But this husband has come home to find his wife with another penguin. He flips out. His strategy is simple. Batter the homewrecker until he flees. Most birds have hollow bones in their wings to make them lighter for flight. But penguins don't fly. Their flippers contain solid bone. They use them like baseball bats to club each other, delivering up to eight blows a second. Thick blubber helps protect vital organs from the pummeling. Stalemate. The love rivals call to the female to let her decide the victor. She chooses the home wrecker. The husband stands to lose the mother of his children. He follows them home. This fight isn't over yet. With the home wrecker hiding in the burrow, the only way to get to him is with a beak attack. Penguins usually use their beaks to gouge their burrows. Now, they are gouging out eyes.
The husband escalates the fight. He stands to lose more than his partner. An injured penguin is a prime target for hungry birds of prey. He makes one last plea to the female. But she's got no time for losers. Defeated and humiliated, he's left out in the cold. He'll lick his wounds and move on. In a colony of nearly a quarter of a million, there are plenty more fish in the sea. The dense tropical jungles of India. Prowling ground of the tiger. One of the world's biggest cats. At 450 pounds, he strikes with 10 times the force of a heavyweight boxer. They can leap over 30 feet. And when it comes to protecting their turf, the tiger on tiger clashes bring savage battles. This rookie male has just reached adulthood. He's on the hunt for a patch of his own. Adult tigers are solitary, living in territories of up to 60 square miles. The rookie search has led him onto the land of a ferocious female who will do anything to protect her cubs. A tiger can deal an estimated 1,000 pound blow. Powerful muscles in their front legs and broad shoulders deliver a force stronger than it takes to hit a baseball at 90 miles per hour. The tigress fights back fiercely, but she could be a future mate, so he holds back, allowing the tigress to land a painful claw swipe to the paw. Rookie cuts his losses and limps away. He knows he needs his own turf to call home. The rookie stakes out the perfect patch, owned by someone else. This 15-year-old bruiser matches him pound for pound, which means risking way more than a scratched paw. If he wants his own patch, he'll have to risk his life. Tigers specialize in ambush, and their paws are specially designed to help. They can retract their claws into a protective glove of skin, helping to silence their steps. When the tiger wants to attack, the tendons that attach the claws to the bone extend, unleashing four inch long sabers. A single swipe can take the face off a human. with his four-inch claws and deals a bloody blow.
tigers are tiring. Heavy bones and dense muscle mass. They're built for short bursts of aggression. The old bruiser is bloodied and looks beat. The rookie thinks he's nailed it. But the bruiser's still standing. A tiger his age could have had dozens of fights. What the bruiser lacks in stamina, he makes up for with combat experience. And he has home advantage. A sucker punch turns the fight on its head. He goes straight for the rookie's jugular. Three-inch canines are the longest of any cat. Gaps between the canines and back teeth allow tigers to sink their teeth deep into prey. Nerve endings in his teeth are so sensitive that he can feel exactly where to bite to sever the spinal cord. Delivering up to 1,000 pounds of pressure per square inch. Unlike a human jaw, tiger jaws can only move up and down, not side to side. So no amount of twisting by the prey slackens the grip. This is the end game. His windpipe is crushed. The rookie can't breathe. Suffocating to a slow death. The bruiser retains his territory and his pick of the females. For his inexperience, this young tiger has paid the ultimate price. Being a fish in the sea comes with its own set of problems. In shallow waters, this shark is used to taking his pick when it comes to lunch. But an octopus shows who's boss. Six foot long arms and over 2,000 suckers lock the shark down, slowly strangling it to death. But when octopuses fight each other, arms don't cut it. They fight dirty and face being eaten by their own kind. The balmy waters of Myanmar, home to this armed assassin who's hot in pursuit of another octopus he caught red-handed, snooping in his food stash. As the assassin closes in, the snooper takes off. Breaking out some of the animal kingdom's smartest secret weapons. A squirt of ink creates a smoke screen. He flees the scene. When an octopus needs to move fast, it uses its own inbuilt jet engine. A siphon in the mantle sucks water in and spits it out at 27 miles per hour. The same swimming speed as a barracuda, propelling it headfirst through the water like a bullet. But the assassin still has him in his sights. The snooper tries a different trick. Camouflage. But hiding doesn't cut it. The assassin prepares to strike with the most deadly weapon of all, a venomous bite from a hidden beak. This angry octopus won't give up. The snooper doesn't step up or get away. He could become lunch. There's 
one part of these invertebrates that isn't soft and slippery. Each octopus has a mouth at the center of its body. It's like a parrot's beak, and every bit is sharp. Inside the beak is a tongue with a strip of teeth. Glands release paralyzing venom. The assassin closes in. The snooper fights back. Assassin turns cannibal. The snooper becomes sushi. Above the oceans, in the mountainous rainforests of Kenya, a Jackson's chameleon makes light work of lunch. This high roller has food, a canopy condo, and all the girls he can get his claws on. with envy. He wants the roller's patch and the girls. It's time for a treetop joust. In the tall rainforest trees, the stakes are high. The loser is for the long drop. These are their not-so-secret weapons. Three bone horns with a keratin coating. Evolved solely for the purpose of dueling. The challenger sets his sights on the high roller. He can rotate each eye 180 degrees in different directions without moving his head. So one eye always remains trained on the enemy. The high roller's hiss is a warning to stand down. But the challenger needs to risk it all to improve his breeding rights. Game on. The aim of the game is to topple your opponent from the branch. The winner keeps the territory. The first tactic, lance each other with their custom-built weapons. Natural selection has given the high roller longer horns. A breakage is intensely painful and leaves the owner unarmed. He tries to pierce the four layers of skin on his opponent's head. These guys have a head for heights. It's like wrestling on an iron girder on top of a 20-story high-rise. Their pincer-like feet act as clamps. A leg grab forces the challenger off the branch. Their tails are as long as their bodies and act as safety harnesses. The high roller channels all the power in his neck muscles into a powerful head flick. Game over. The fall is physical and hierarchical. If he wants to breed, he'll have to duel with someone else. Because here, the high roller is still top of the tree. Seventeen hundred miles northwest, in the steamy mangrove swamps of Indonesia, 
lurks the world's second largest lizard, the water monitor. Armed with 54 serrated teeth, there's no creature this extreme carnivore won't eat. It's even been known to dig up and devour human corpses. Monitors are solitary creatures who really don't get along. But breeding time brings them to the same watering hole. And such close quarters means war. This male monitor is top dog. He gets the best of everything, the most food, and his choice of females. This challenger is willing to risk injury and even death for a slice of the action. Monitors fight prey on four legs. Monitor on monitor, upright is preferred. It's a full-on sumo grapple. Their legs are so strong, they can outrun an Olympic sprinter. Now they harness that power, trying to slam each other into the riverbed. Strong, clawed feet mean they can hang from a tree by a single toe. Round one to top dog. But it's not over yet. Their tails are one and a half times the length of their bodies and packed full of muscle. The challenger uses his as a third leg, anchoring him to the riverbed. But it's not enough. Smackdown. Round three, and the challenger knows he's lost. The top dog retains his title for another day. You don't need all the moves to win in Animal Fight Club. Sometimes a single strike is enough to take the title. In the Vietnamese jungle, this four-year-old Burmese python is out for lunch. And he's just spotted his favorite bite, a nice, juicy rat. The hungry diner constricts his 16-foot-long body around it. Pythons can go months without eating, but when they do, they really pig out. They can eat their own body weight in one sitting. That's like a grown man eating a 200-pound cheeseburger. Once he's gulped down his fast food, he'll slope off to a sunny spot and spend several days digesting it. But not so fast. A rat thief's forked tongue sniffs him out. The tongue's two prongs pick up scent from different directions, giving him stereo smell. And he wants a piece of the pie. An opportunist, it's easier to steal than catch something himself. The diner quickly stashes away his rat. If the thief wants the rat, he'll have to think big. He goes for the diner. With 350 bones in his spine, 10 times that of a human, he loops his body around the diner. He contracts his muscles to tighten the coil and squeezes so tight his victim can't breathe. 
each time the victim breathes out, the python tightens the coil. Death by suffocation. The python can feel its victim's heartbeat stop. Once it does, he relaxes the coil. A full-grown Burmese could easily strangle an adult human to death. The rat thief has committed a crime. Now, he must dispose of the evidence. He can dislocate his own jaw and get his mouth around something five times bigger than his own head. His backward-facing teeth act as ratchets, driving his victim further down into his belly. swallows the diner, he begins to redesign his own body to aid digestion. Over the next few days, his metabolism will increase sevenfold. His heart and intestine will expand by up to 150 percent. Leaving not a shred of evidence. the tropical mountain forests of western India. Stomping ground of the Travancore tortoise. It may not be fast, but it's nothing less than furious. This trooper has been having an off-duty snooze to keep cool. But something's got him hot and bothered. There's been a break-in and someone's making himself right at home. He might only be 13 inches long, but this invader wants to wage war. He plans to run the trooper out of town, annex his land, and take all his women. The trooper needs to mobilize fast, or he'll be homeless and loveless. He storms over. met with a series of sharp nips. Too many bites will damage the trooper's only mode of transportation, leaving him unable to find food. He takes cover under his hard hat, rallies himself, and hits back with his biggest weapon yet. These are nature's miniature battering rams. And given they live around 30 years, they get a lot of practice. It might look like these warriors are in slow-mo, but they are operating at maximum tortoise speed. The trooper reels his front legs back to inject as much force as possible into his body blows. tries to flip the invader. If he can capsize him, he could be stuck on his back and starve to death. But the invader is no stranger to some heavy shelling. He bites back even harder. The trooper beats a hasty retreat to set up camp somewhere else. There's more than one pint-sized prize fighter in the tropics. The rainforests of Thailand, playground of the quirkiest contender in the Animal Fight Club fray. A stalk-eyed fly. This little fella is newly hatched. But before he ventures out into the world, there's one last thing he needs to do. He sucks in air to form bubbles. 
The bubbles travel up through his head, inflating his eye stalks. The whole process takes only 15 minutes. Transformation complete. He's no longer just a fly. He's Superfly. And it's time for a fly fight. Stalk-eyed flies are a social bunch. The males and females hang out together every night. And all the chicks go weak at the knees for a guy with a substantial stalk. It's a sign of virility. The new kid's been blessed by nature. His stalk is so long, it's the same length as his body. He heads out to test drive his new stalk. But someone's eyeballing him. The stalk-eyed fly has an excellent field of vision. Their eyes are like balls on stalks and covered in around 2,500 tiny lenses so they can see behind their heads and their vision at the front overlaps by up to 70%. Perfect for spotting a peripheral threat. This aggressive fly is also well endowed. There's only room for one big stalk in this town. The new kid lifts his front legs to demonstrate the size of his stalk. He measures up. He's won the right to challenge the big shot. They go stalk to stalk, trying to butt each other off the branch. If the new kid can oust the big shot, he'll have rights to all females who pass by. Budding stalks isn't working. The new kid changes up. He starts throwing punches. Each of their six feet has two pads that release a type of glue, anchoring their back legs to the branch so they can rear up and spar. These fights can last over a minute, a fair stretch in a fly's eight-week lifetime. It all comes down to stamina. This new kid has youth on his side. The big shot can't keep up. He runs off, his pride dented, and his chances with the ladies ruined. The new kid rubs his hands together with glee. A mobile city of one and a half million wildebeest. The only other mammals to live this densely are humans. On the move, these wanderers of the African wilderness get along fine. But when they stop to breed, friends become foes. Able to run at 40 miles per hour and with lethally sharp horns. When these bulls go head to head in a bid to extend their bloodline, only the toughest referees can break up the fight. This mature male is guarding a patch of land filled with his female mates. He marks his territory with scent glands. But he's got competition. A cocky young bachelor bull without 
a bachelor pad. He wants to kick the older male out of town and inherit his females. The young bachelor strikes. They fight on their knees. Each beast has horns that curve up 90 degrees. Deadly hooks, nearly three feet long. An uppercut to the jugular would cause fatal blood loss. Known as twist fighting, they bow and turn their heads to protect their necks from a stabbing. The young bachelor beats the old bull in size. He uses his powerful neck muscles to lob him into the air. The youngster tries a new tactic, a half Nelson. His horn is in a precarious position. One jab could pierce the old bull's underbelly. It's too close to the vital organs. The youngster's shown how far he's prepared to go. The risks are too great. The old bull makes a run for it, leaving his harem behind. triumphant young bachelor has earned his right to the top spot.